Would you say you have control over your phone or the phone has control over you? Um, if someone were to take away my phone today, um, I might not know what to do. I would love to say that I have control over my phone. Do I have control? like my phone owns me. My phone used to have control over me. Society tells us that, you know, you're not okay. You're just not okay. No matter what you do, you know, there's always something better. Everything is really a competition anymore on social media. This is who I want to be and who I want to be seen as. That creates a denial of inside yourself. This is so stimulating. It feels so real. Oh, well, who liked it? Click on it, and then I'd be on a tw in a Twitter hole for hours. What picture I'm posting? How many likes am I gonna get? Am I gonna get bullied for posting this picture of me? Am I gonna get insulted, mocked. There haven't been enough studies to see how it psychologically affects. It gives you that immediate gratification, those chemicals get released, and you know, you go back for more and more. Should have done something better with my life than just being with my phone. They're not actors, this is, that's their real life, and you wish you were involved. We're running a social skills group here because they lose that connection. Socially, I'm not connecting with people, even though online it looks like I am. It would be as easy as just deleting the apps, but I just undo it. I got my first cell phone in middle school, 2006. I was 12. I think I got my first phone when I was 12 years old. Mm, maybe like 14, 15. It was like a $20 phone. I was probably like in middle school uh, whenever I got a phone, maybe 11, and uh, my parents gave me the phone as a safety precaution. So I didn't actually want a cell phone when I first got one. Um, my mom bought it for me. I was involved in a lot of clubs and organizations, and she couldn't keep track of me, so she bought one so that she could text me every day and figure out where I was. Back then, social media wasn't even that big, and I didn't even think a lot of people had internet in their phones, so it was more for calling my parents. From my parents' perspective, it was like a safety, just if something happened in school or something. But I wanted the phone to talk to my friends, not my parents. When I first got a phone, um, I was kind of overwhelmed with the responsibility of it and also just the pure size because it was a giant flip phone and I was very small. I was very excited. I just remember not being able to fall asleep the first night because all I wanted to do is just basically play with my phone. And I only had one game, so it wasn't even like social media. It just I wanted to be with my phone. I think that owning a phone is a good and a bad thing. Um, it's good because you can kind of keep in touch with people that may not live near you or be around as much, um, but it can also be bad if you are too dependent on it um, if or, or if you spend too much time on it. It can be hard to, to enact with another person um, face to face. Right now in the society that we live in, owning a phone is a necessary thing. You can really can't do anything without it. Like, that's how you meet with your friends, that's how you basically are connected with your social network. I think it's a necessary thing. I use my phone for a lot of things, um, especially these days. Um, I talk to my family a lot. They live pretty far away from me. I also use it for the weather, for social media, um, things like that, just keeping track of the news and stuff that's going on. I mostly use my phone um, to text people. To me, now it's more like a tool, um, you know, to get online, to order things that I need, or um, 
get places that I need to go or something like that. Social media, when it comes to Twitter, Instagram, I spend a lot of time, especially on Twitter. And I'm not proud of it, but it's mainly texting and Twitter. Social media is a big way I use my phone. I would say probably five years ago, phone was social media, um, and phone was phone was just media, like you know, like media, social media and media and all the technology. They were all this one like solid conglomerate. Um, now I think my phone is a way to access my friends and bring them to me or go get to them. Social media is, is a complicated organism. Um, I think it has its benefits. I think that um, some organizations use it for, for, for good things, they go give out good messages. Um, and then it also, I mean, social media is a hard thing to interact with. Uh, you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, so it, it can be tough. I would describe social media as a good thing if you know how to use it. But I think there's a lot of people that they live through social media instead of living with social media. For me, Social media has been uh, like all kinds of things. Growing up, kind of a way to learn how to be like myself, how to be a teenager, how to be an American, like all of those things. And then also like kind of that pressure in a, in a negative way as well. Like that, like that, those pressures to learn how to be a certain way through like posts and what we see in advertisements and stuff like that. Just like a way to kind of. Um, create culture and so like I have a say in how culture is being created through social media and so does everybody else. As a society I really feel like um, everything is truly immediate gratification and I think that when people are starting to look for answers that they really have a very um, they have a goal in mind and they want to get it regardless what it is and so they're gonna find these answers um, in whatever social media, whether you're gonna Google it or Bing it or something, you're gonna get those answers. But then also too, like maybe those answers are not always the right answers or they're valid answers or they're trustworthy answers. With some apps, it's very easy to get the information you want, but again, it's very easy to immediately assume that what they're saying is truth. So sometimes I think validity needs to be um, proof first. I love Twitter but I hate it at the same time because it's like you go on and if people want to take a stance, it doesn't even have to be political, it could just be about anything. You swear that like these people have PhDs and whatever they're talking about. And the problem with social media, especially Twitter, is now everyone has the ability to get a platform to speak. And sometimes like some of these these opinions that I come across are just so like wrong, like factually that it's tough because then you know they're still getting 100k retweets and stuff so it's like you see how many people actually believe this stuff and it's like oh my god like what are we doing my use of social media has shifted lately um i used to use it for people that i i knew really well and wanted to kind of keep up with and i still use it for that sometimes um especially since i've, I've moved states um, but i also have used it lately to follow you know political organizers I like to be connected with my friends from back home and they're very active in their social media. So I like to see what they post, I like to see what they're doing. I just think that I, I guess I just don't want to miss that part of them. I could call them in FaceTime, but sometimes I'm just, I think it's easier to just see what they're posting and it's an easier way to see what they're doing all the time. It was probably when I first started college, um, you know, like away from home, all my friends in, you know, in the other states and um, needing to make new friends, needing to socialize, needing to be like present with other people and not being able to because I had all of these like social media apps on my phone that were this like easy access fix of being social and being present with somebody, it, it, you know, give, giving me this like sense of of a social life, giving me a sense of friendship and acceptance and I know what my friends are doing, I know, you know, I know where they are, where they're at, and um, I know that they're having fun, but then the after, after effect of it is like, well, I'm not with them and I'm not also enjoying the same things as them. It's weird though because I have the friends who will text me and that's like how we talk and I have friends like ironically, like we won't text, but don't message me on Snapchat or Instagram. So we'll have full blown conversations on those platforms. It's just weird. It's like, I, like I joke about like, you're my Snapchat friend. Then I have my like text friends and like my Instagram friends. 
You know, like you see these kids that are like, what's your snap? And that's how they're gonna talk. Sitting at a table and like, trying to connect with new people at college when we're all kind of on our phones waiting for somebody to bring up a conversation that we'll all that we'll all be included in part into and never really being able, able able to connect because we're all already on our phones after going through that cycle so many times and not feeling like I was really with anybody even when I was with friends and I just nixed it all it was like you know starting from scratch we're just gonna have Facebook so we can communicate with you know friends and like family from you know however long ago and and that's it and ever since then it's been like just Facebook <laughs> I can't handle anymore <laughs> like I, I like that's just the limit for me so I think that people want to put out there what people what they think society wants you know what their friends want um, you know they want their likes they want people to say um, you know this is good, um, I like what you're doing, you know, I'm on, I'm on board with your cause or whatever it is, but um, they might not actually really be like that in normal life. Um, they want everybody to think that, you know, I'm okay, this is okay, everything's okay. On social media platforms, each one they say like kind of represents like a different side of you, like Twitter's supposed to be your personality, Instagram's supposed to represent like how you want people to perceive you, and if Facebook's like the best representation of who you are and stuff. So I, I think when we do that, we're trying to almost advertise ourselves in a way that's not always accurate. Your clothing or like how you, you know, like how you build your home or how you, um, I mean, how you even like arrange the icons on your laptop. Like no matter what it is, we're constantly like trying to convey who we feel like we are on the inside to everyone else around us. And, and so like with social media, I think one of the express purposes of something like an Instagram feed or a Twitter feed or, so, or your Facebook, whatever it is, one of the express purposes, not just to keep in touch with your friends and family, which is what I think we all kind of tell ourselves to make ourselves feel okay with it, is that it's to create ourselves. It causes a lot of dissociation when it comes to one personal life and what you want to be your life. I think it just causes a lot of anxiety. I do like social media, don't get me wrong. I like going on Instagram and seeing people go out and go to nice restaurants and I'll save it so I know like I can go look back and be like, that's a restaurant I want to go to. So we, we have this like act of creativity and, and creation whenever we're posting and we're, you know, manipulating our photos and whenever we're making captions and whenever we're picking out whatever, you know, whenever we're selecting our activities and the pictures that we're deciding to pick and post it's all an act of like creation and saying to everyone who can see us this is who I am this is who I want to be and who I want to be seen as and I think that like that's re a really exciting feeling it's a really exciting to know that like at the drop of a hat I can be who I want to be to an audience if I was unsatisfied with my life like unsatisfied with the habits that I had like my like my daily life habits like if I you know like oh I really wish I worked out more if I really wish that I, I baked more or did my hobbies more or something like that like I could get on Instagram and collect pictures of things that I had done and make myself feel like I really was that person that I wanted to be and make other people think that too. Everything is really a competition anymore on social media. Whoever gets the most likes, whoever has the, the prettier photo, whoever, you know, can, can post so much or like content quality. So in any capacity, I think is a little bit underlying, like, hey, am I the best or am I not? I take it super serious. This is kind of weird, but I, like I have a notebook with just like captions of like song lyrics and different stuff I like. So sometimes when I post on Instagram, it actually has nothing to do with the pictures. It's like the fact that I like this quote or I like this caption because I, I feel like it's a really good job of like ex expressing yourself. For me, it was like this whole, it was just the, the, this like bottomless pit of like, I'm not that person, I want to be that person, um, but she's not me. That feeling of like kind of self-dread and self-hatred whenever 
your Instagram feed and your Twitter feed and whatever it is, it doesn't match like what your day to day life feels like. I think that's kind of where like that dissatisfaction starts with like the dissatisfaction is in your real life. It's not online. And that's what I felt like the dissatisfaction with like socially, I'm not connecting with people, even though online it looks like I am. That creates such a, a denial of inside yourself, I think. I'm going to put out here what I think people want to see and what people are going to approve of and then turn around and then I really that's not what I think about myself all the time and so now I have shame and guilt then you, you just lose yourself. That was kind of like the linchpin that was like I, I can't do anymore like I um, it's like it's never going to be enough for me just to have a happy online life when there's like a real life out there that I could be living and nobody like even if nobody knows about it at least it's satisfying to me. Society tells us that you know you're not okay you're just not okay no matter what you do you know there's always something better and the internet provides you with that. I feel like there's not there haven't been enough studies to see how it psychologically affects people because I definitely know people who go on there they, they can't handle it they can't manage it it's like um, I'll go out with like some friends and even to a pirate game, it's like they're not watching for themselves, they're recording so other people can see and then they want to turn to me and be like, what just happened? It's like, dude, I'm not telling you, like, you had the chance to go experience it. So I think we live in a generation where we have to find that balance or else we get caught up and lost in what's actually going on in our lives. Sometimes I think we live in a society that if you didn't take a picture and there's not a picture of something you did, you didn't do it. And that's what I mean by living through social media. Living with social media is, I feel I would say, is like learning how to take advantage of, because there's positive things of, so, of social media, and if you know how to use them and basically put them in your life, it can be a positive thing. Social media definitely affects everyone's mental health in a way, because we don't realize that there's so much social pressure when it comes to, well, let's see what picture I'm posting, how many likes am I going to get, am I going to get bullied for posting this picture of me, am I going to get insulted, mocked, there's so many things that it goes through someone's mind in a conscious and unconscious level before posting a picture, there's so much work, it's even like unnoticed, like you don't even think about it, but behind, before posting every single picture, there's a lot of work in someone's brain. You get caught up, they get caught up in that traffic, like trying to compare their lives to someone else or how this girl looks in a bikini or like they get sad because they see that this person spent the last month on vacations and stuff like that. For me, I try to keep everything relative. Like I lo I'll go on and look at that stuff, but I don't ever let it really sway me one way or another. Do you think a lot of people are not living their own life? I will say they are living their life, but with a lot of social pressure and I would say that maybe they would live in a different way if they didn't want to impress all the time and pretend that they have a perfect life in their personal social media accounts. Can people get addicted to their phones? Absolutely, yes. Um, I see it a lot. Um, I've had many sessions with um, parents on taking phones as consequences. Um, there's research that shows that um, the dopamine and the adrenaline actually increases um, the more stimulation that you get, whether you're looking at um, if you're playing a game or if you are um, excited about a post that you made or somebody liked your post, it, you know, it gives you that immediate gratification, those chemicals get released and, you know, you go back for more and more. I just think it's gratification. You can go on your phone and I can feel something. This is so stimulating. It feels so real and it feels like you're doing something. It's immediate. It's an immediate feeling. You know, you don't really have to work for it because it just comes to you. I don't think they're healthy feelings though all the time. I don't think that they're genuine feelings. I think they're, you know, invoked um, by something else. It's just easier than actually going out there and doing things. If I can just go on my phone and see um, people at restaurants and stuff. It's like so easy and so engrossing to just sit on my phone and online shop and 
just scroll around on there, you know, even if it's just looking at my bank account or, you know, like just stuff like that, it's easier and there's so much less resistance to do that than to do something in real life where I have to physically move my body to get up and go in the kitchen and bake something or get up and, you know, do paint something or whatever it is, do one of my actual hobbies in real life. The resistance level is so low to pick up my phone and do it. As we, you know, need all that immediate gratification, we lack patience, we lack tolerance, we lack the ability to um, take a moment and breathe and just be a part of um, society as it's happening in front of you rather than just going to get what you need and then move on. These emotional skills that allow me to ask deep questions and connect with you and make you feel loved and accepted and, and to you know connect with you on a, on a human to human level whenever um, you know, if, if I'm so caught up in my image and in your image that I'm not able to meet you where you are in person then that's definitely a loss on my part and definitely a loss on anyone's part if, if, if that's kind of the, the direction that we're going in. Now that like face to face communication is definitely going down and people aren't realizing how to interact with people because they're spending so much time doing it over the web. Every time you go to an elevator and, there's, and you're with strangers, there's this awkward silence and no one wants to feel the, I guess, like the silence, but what everyone does is just checking at your phone even, you're not, even if you're not reading anything and that makes them feel comfortable. So if they have to wait for something, like whether it's food or drink or something, they'll just pop out their phone to kind of tune out everything that's around them. Like you, like before phones, you kind of, like you would just, you know, say hi to someone. But now we live in like a dissociative kind of like society where like if someone just says hi to you in passing, like if I walk past a person, and I'm like hi, they're like freaked out a little bit. Like I've done that in times where like the person was like 10 steps away from me by the time they realize that, hey, I probably should say hi, just because they're not used to people being outgoing anymore. Even when we're sitting in a room with somebody, um, you're on your phone. Um, I watch my kids be on their phones and we're all in the same room. And it's not only just us on the phones, like there's, you know, my daughter can be on her laptop and she has her phone going off and my son will be um, watching something on Netflix and he'll have his phone next to him. and. Um, Sometimes I'll have my phone beside me and I'll be watching what's on Netflix and want to have a conversation and they're halfway paying attention. They don't pay attention and many people, um, they miss a lot. I mean, they're not retaining the information as it's coming to them because they're distracted. They're only giving half their attention or even, you know, like 25% of their attention rather than being fully present. Sometimes I find myself thinking how things be for me if I was born maybe two decades before this one because I always thought that it was so much easier when there was no social media phones were not a thing so people would actually have to face someone and ask them out and if you wanted to spend time with them you couldn't just like text them you actually had to go there and be like let's go let's go on to something I just think I would have worked better with something like that. Would it not be so nice to just get a flip phone? Like, I would love a flip phone. It would be so refreshing to just like, call, just call me. Like, just call me, and that's all I need to hear from my friends. Like, if I don't, if, if you don't, like, we don't need anything else other than just to text and call each other so we can get together. I see many kids that they're anxious. They think that people are looking at them funny. Um, can't go down the hallway at school. Um, because somebody said something about them or somebody read something somewhere and they think that they're talking about them. Um, I think that the anxiety of what you look like, um, how, what clothes you wear, what your body looks like, um, you know, whether you have acne or no acne, you know, all these. So there's all these um, ways that the social media really affects how we present ourselves rather than just getting to know who you are. I find myself using my phone as a way to avoid my responsibilities in real life or like the problems that I have or um, even avoid fully committing to my hobbies and like 
my like things that like my big dreams and my big goals like I can I definitely have avoided my life by using my phone and that's really scary they feel like they're missing something and so they go to find something that is going to be a temporary fix or a temporary fill um, but it's not it's not long lasting. When you turn the screen off, like it, it just goes away. Like it just goes away, and there's this whole like actual world, physical world, in front of you. That core person and your your self esteem and your confidence, your morals, your values, your you know your internal conscience, really needs to be developed as a person before you start looking outside of yourself. Um, I feel like. The minute you start looking outside of yourself, then you're critiquing yourself or you're comparing yourself to that person. Am I like this person? Am I not like this person? Can I be like this person? What do I like about this person? What do I don't like? I tell my girl clients, um, especially like, you know, the younger teens and even older teens, um, you know, to fall in love with yourself. I remember a girl told me, I asked her, she was new. I said, so tell me about, you know, your friends at school and she's, she's not very social. And um, I said, so who do you talk to at lunch and who do you hang out with in the morning? Or like, you know, who do you say hi to in the hallways? And she said, you know, that there's um, people at school um, that you can tell who they are. And she used the term and I was just kind of so blown back. She said, those girls are the ones that are good at life. And I was like, how are they good at life? Like, what makes them good at life? And she said, because they all stand around and talk to each other and they're on their phones and they're sharing this stuff and, and so they look like they have it all together. It was just amazing to me that that was a perception that was given to her probably by social media. We can all relate to that feeling of like being being isolated, being alone and and watching from the outside it, you know, it's, it's different than watching a television show where you know that they're actors and you know that these people are doing something um, just for show but when it's your friends and your family they're not actors this is that's their real life and you wish you were involved My name is Liz Bailey, I'm 28 years old, and I'm a bartender. I've definitely seen an increase of cell phone usage in the last 10 years in restaurants, and I think that's just because the more phones can do, the more people will spend investigating or, you know, trying to be creative, posting photos, talking to people. I mean, I think that's just where we're headed. When it comes to like social settings, Americans use their phone in a more consistent base. Just because when you're back home and you're, I don't know, like you would never go to, let's say like the cafe you know, on a college campus and you would never see someone eating with their friends, FaceTiming someone. And I hear, I found to be very interesting when in America I saw that a lot of times and it's not like rude or anything, it's just something that they do and I just maybe think it's cultural differences. If I go out to eat or if I'm with friends, like I like to shut off my phone, put it upside down on the table. Some people can't do that. They get a notification, they just gotta check me. I feel like I'm so cognizant of people's time that like if I'm out there with them, I find I almost like disrespectful if I'm on my phone. 98% of people, there's only a handful of people that don't interact with their phones at all, but pretty much everybody in some way acts or interacts with their phone while they're in the bar. In certain groups of friends, like meeting friends of friends, out to dinner, meeting new people, and it's always kind of like an unknown as to whether like, will we sit down for drinks at a bar and are they gonna pull their phone out the whole time or not? Like, am I gonna actually get to talk to them and meet them or will they just play on their phone the entire time? I really haven't seen people put you know, make an effort to put their phones out of sight, out of mind. Really, one of the only times that I see people not on their phones is when people are on, are on first dates, which is kind of cool. I mean, like, that's like an old timey thing, I guess, is you want to be, be like physically, mentally with whoever you're, you're sitting with. I used to work in a place where there wasn't really anything around. It was kind of located in such a place that it didn't really have great service. So they did provide Wi-Fi at the beginning and people would stream like 
the Super Bowl and people would gather and, and texting and, and whatnot and then they just cut that completely and everybody spent more time talking to each other. They had community tables so they everybody's talking to their neighbor figuring out you know if they were a tourist if they weren't so like making those connections and watching it happen was like super cool. I can remember so many meals with people who I wanted, I was, I was friends with or wanted to be friends with and sitting around at this table at a beautiful meal, like, you know, at some cool restaurant we had been waiting to try, you know, some cool sushi place or something like that and no conversation going on and, you know, everybody's sitting on their phone and then two hours later we finish the meal and on Instagram it pops up these pictures of, you know, pictures of our meal, beautiful meal, beautiful pictures, you know, perfect, perfect uh, com composition of the photo and perfect filter put on it and some caption about how like wonderful the meal was and how wonderful the friendships were and just thinking like that wasn't like that's not what happened like you know like that's that really wasn't it you know we we sat looking at our phones most of the time because nobody could think of anything to say and we were all playing on Twitter and Instagram and catching up on our feeds and was just like that was the reality of the thing I can remember dozens and dozens of meals like that and dozens of experiences like that and I found that like that is an acceptable experience for so many people our age that like that's their like that's just enough for so many people our age that like they don't expect anything more they don't expect to go out with friends and laugh and have a good time and have good conversation over food and and to be like really present with everyone and to like feel like connected with their friends and um, to feel heard and like if you know to to be for their friends to be able to pick up on like small changes to their like emotions and stuff like that like I think people our age have kind of stopped like expecting that and so just having the picture that said that they did it is kind of enough and it's a shame because there's so much more like I, I find myself sometimes when people come in with their their airpods they come in and I don't really see them. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? They like, they're just looking at me. I was like, if somebody, you know, has, has their nose in their phone, it prevents me from doing my job. I can't sell you a beer if you're not paying attention to me. When it becomes a point where you're ignoring people and, you know, that phone is more important than the people in front of you, um, that that's too much. Um, I think it almost needs to be regulated by that person, but I don't think the people even, you know, know that they're getting addicted to their phone. I have had to be very conscious lately um, about my cell phone usage, especially my social media usage. Um, I've, I've moved a few apps a few screens over, so I have to actively like swipe toward them in order to access them because I, I did find myself, you know, getting on Instagram and just scrolling for hours at a time, which sounds really sad and kind of is. If I could see Twitter and Instagram as soon as I pull my phone up and unlock it, that I was more likely to just click on it and be like, well, I wonder what's happening. Um, I don't have any notifications turned on for any of my apps because I, I would tweet a lot and if people liked it or retweeted it, I would, you know, get that notification and then I'd be like, oh, well, who liked it? it, click on it, and then I'd be on a tw in a Twitter hole for hours. Um, so I, I turned all my notifications off so that I wouldn't do that, and then it ultimately backfired because I would just be like, well, I wonder if anyone answered me, so I would open the app anyway. So it, it did not work. My phone knows more than I do, and I definitely rely on my phone heavily to kind of fill in those gaps of knowledge or fill in those gaps of skill that I just, like, because I have the phone, I never really try to learn those skills. I have this notepad and I like to write out my weekly goals. And if I do that, then I'm usually not as, not like on my phone as much because I'm trying to work towards things. I can like genuinely say I have spent entire days on my phone, not know, you know, like just un unknowingly just moving from one sitting area and laying area to another. But I would say probably on average, like three to four hours. I would say like four hours, three hours, I don't know, a lot. I, I would say that I spend a few hours, maybe three or four hours. I think two hours is probably what I get in a day. Um, and I'm trying to limit that down, maybe get down to one hour. Definitely too much. <laughs> I probably wake up in the morning and if I'm not going to work, I probably play on my phone for 
half an hour or an hour. And then throughout the day, probably two more hours of playing on my phone. And if I don't have plans, I probably have standing plans to play on my phone all day. <laughs> How many hours a day would you consider to be a healthy relationship with the phone? The healthy amount in social media and what you're doing on your phone really depends on what, what's healthy and what's not. So I think you gotta define what that looks like or what healthy is. If you're using it for emails and, and connecting with people in positive ways, um, you know, I would say like an hour to maybe an hour and a half if you're sharing. But if you're just isolating and using it as a vice and you're using it, you know, just to feed yourself all this, you know, fast information, it's really, I would say, yeah, I wouldn't say any more than like two hours a day. I don't know if that's even possible. Can you get your phone and check how many hours you spend daily? Yeah. Uh, now I'm nervous because I feel like this is going to be embarrassing based on what I said. It says four hours and 30 minutes, which I will say I was traveling for basketball, so that goes up when I travel. My daily average today was four hours and 35 minutes, which is actually down 18% from last week. It says five hours a week, five hours, 11 minutes. That's not bad. A week or baby? Uh, that's what it says in a week. I mean, I'm about on track for what I expect to be doing. <laughs> to be quite honest, terrible. I should have done something better with my life than just being with my phone, like, I don't know. And the fact that I had to justify myself saying, oh yeah, I was traveling with the team on the bus for so many hours, probably it helped, but I don't think it has that much of an impact. Um, I can tell that I spend more time on my phone when I don't have work, <laughs> so I think keeping busy helps a lot, um, but I think actively trying to, to spend less time on my phone is, is always a good choice. I like the feature that Apple has where it tells you my screen time, and I actually set my Instagram so it notifies me if I spend more than 35 minutes a day on the app. So it's, I'm conscious of the fact that this could be a problem, so I made preventative steps. This is my life. I don't want to spend more than 35 minutes. I think that's enough for me looking at other people's lives. I don't even do anything on Facebook. I, I like literally do not do it. And it'll tell me, oh, you have like 25 notifications. Look what you've been missing. Or, you know, I really don't care because one, I'm busy. Two, I'm busy living life, like this life, the one that is in front of me, um, much more than looking at what other people are doing. I mean, I find myself in my own relationships, my friendships, I'm like, hey, we gotta disconnect. Like, phone's in the middle of the table. Let's just, you know, be here. That's been like kind of my thing. I'm just, I just want to be here because if I'm, if I'm thinking about how many likes I have on Instagram on the photo I just took of my beer, then, you know, who cares if I'm actually sitting here drinking my beer? You don't, you don't, you will remember the memory even if you don't take a picture of it. You know, like you're going to remember it. Um, you don't have to have a thousand pictures. You don't have to have posted it anywhere. It really doesn't end up mattering if it was nowhere as long as you were you were actually there. I realized that at the end of the week I spent so much time with my phone and I could be doing other stuff. I think I have a pretty healthy relationship um, with social media and things like that, at least at least to me as, as a millennial. I'm sure it's probably not great. I want to say it's a healthy one. I mean, I generally think it's a healthy one, but I think I maybe depend on it too much more than I would like to. It's more like a safety thing to me. It's like if I like if my phone dies, like I do feel like that kind of pressure of like being a little bit unsafe because I remember when I was a little kid and like I, I got the phone as a safety precaution from my parents. So I still feel that as the original purpose of the phone. Like I need this if I need to call somebody if I'm in an emergency. And so whenever it dies, it's like, Ugh, what if I'm in an emergency and I still need this? But everything else is like it's just an accessory. It's like you know having a having a jacket on or something like that. Like, you don't really need it. You don't really need the Facebook or anything else. Like, it's nice to have it, but if you don't have it, you're fine anyway. I lived in Oklahoma for 15 years, and there was a commercial that came on, and it was like, um, it was like farmer dating. And I was just, it, it was kind of weird, and I, I was like, oh my God, there's a farmer dating thing. Even with dating, it's like I don't have to do a lot face to face. If I really wanted to, I could go on Tinder, or I could go on Instagram, or any social media and send a message. I feel that new technology has definitely changed um, how dating is happening. Um, to a point, actually, you'd always 
be complaining about, oh, well, there's nobody out there anymore. It's because everybody's meeting other people through online dating. I'm Veronica and I'm 36. I'm Kurt, I'm 37. We met on Bumble. Well, Bumble is an app, um, and so basically you see people's pictures and a very short bio um, that they do, and based on your first impression, you either swipe right or left. It's kind of similar to Tinder, but the difference is when you match um, with somebody, the um, woman has to be the first to respond and they only have 24 hours to respond to the match. My friends were like, okay, you should meet someone, like go out, see what's out there. Like I wasn't expecting to meet someone for a long term relationship, but I wasn't looking for like a one night stand either. I, I don't know what I was looking for, maybe to meet someone, like to become a friend or something. It was just to see what was out there because I wasn't meeting anybody any other way, you know? I think a lot of people now are meeting for more serious relationships, online dating. It's good to get out there more than traditional dating, in my opinion. Um, you know, I've been using it so long, and I don't meet a lot of different people through my friends or people through work. When you have to meet somebody through the traditional way, um, you don't get to meet, you know, anybody. I don't think I ever would have met you uh, through my friends, but didn't go to your college, and you don't play the sports that I was playing, and you know. Like. Yeah, well, my friends are international, <laughs> so. I feel it was a little bit easier because um, I'm kind of shy. Um, I don't usually think of myself as the person that just walks up to a girl and just says like, hey, my name's so-and-so, you know, pay attention to me, who, this is who I am. But online, you know, I'm able to, you know, look at common interests and see what somebody's about beforehand. So I felt more comfortable um, in the online dating than I ever have with traditional dating, honestly. I'm in a great relationship now that probably would have never happened if it wasn't for online dating. So yeah, I think it's a good way to, to meet people and also to like um, put down walls some filters that maybe in person would be different, so online you can say a lot of things about you that you won't necessarily tell another person when you just meet, are meeting them for the first time. So I think that makes also things easier because, well, you read a small profile of the person, if you like what they say about themselves, you might give it a chance. Otherwise you can just pass and you avoid like all these um, small talk for the first time maybe. and. And I think that's what happened with us. Like, we both liked what we read about each other. And then when we started talking for the first time through the chat, it was, it was like a really natural, yeah. like, flow in the conversation. It, it felt right. I think the biggest change between online dating and uh, traditional dating is that you can plan what you want to say. Um, you know, you're not always put on the spot like you would be in traditional dating to just kind of get yourself out there. It makes you aware of what you want and what you don't want and what you are looking for and what you're not looking for. So even when you start writing your profile and it asks, you know, what are your interests? What are you looking for? With traditional dating, you don't necessarily think about that. You don't necessarily think what you're looking for in, in a other person or so this makes you aware of that my fears going into online dating is that you just don't know if the people are going to be who they say they are you can have a conversation with somebody and have a you know a voice in your head of this person or you know you're already making an expectation of and when you meet them for the first time some of those expectations aren't there you know that can be also like kind of a defeating thing and you know in my experience it's happened before in the past so even though we we had been talking to each other and everything we were strangers we haven't like it was the first time seeing each other in person so i do feel that for women um there might be like additional concerns um going with someone that you met online going to the first date i was relieved to see that he was like the guy in the picture. Uh, 
And I was like, okay, he's, he's cute. He looks just like the picture. I'm, I'm good. My friends were on call. I was like, okay, I'll text you in half an hour just in case you need to come and rescue me. And I was like, it's fine. We're good. No need to come and get me. <laughs> to me, the first date was really good. Um, you know, we already had established, like, what our interests were um, and what you know, some of our likes or dislikes were to, it kind of felt like we had already met each other. It was just a natural conversation yeah. that we had for like hours because we were already having the same conversations via text. I was raised in a family who, growing up, we had one computer for all of us to share, and then we had a landline, and it was like, you know, the, it, things were just so different back then. You, we were paying by minutes, and um, we were we didn't have access. You know, if you accidentally clicked on the button to make your phone connect to the internet. Woo! <laughs> you know, like your parents are, you're getting like, you're getting talking to from your parents and it's just bad news and you know, like, you know immediately you're like trying to tone the phone off so it doesn't connect to the internet and you get charged that extra like $50 for like one minute of internet time on your flip phone. I remember when I first started dating, the, the guy needed to call home to like the phone line and, and that was like a whole other process and it wasn't like, as easy. And so like that's like that's where we kind of are coming from at this age and we have this like I have this sense I guess that being on the phone is a bad thing and that like we I'm constantly trying to reduce the amount of time that I'm on my phone because it's considered like not part of real life. Kids growing up now I think that because they grew up in a moment where their digital life has been their entire life and their digital life is so integrated into their real life. They've grown up where their parents may have had an Instagram account for them before they were even born, you know, like they, you know, they have follow, you know, my baby Ella on Instagram and, you know, they're posting pictures for them before they can even talk and walk. I have babysat kids who they know how to use YouTube before they can even spit out a full sentence. That's what scares me the most because the new generation coming up, I think they really struggle when it comes to interpersonal intelligence because they're so used to talk through a screen that when it comes to actually talk one-on-one, -on -one, they just freeze and they don't know how to do it. We're running a social skills group here because they lose that connection. They get shy and they get um, internal and they're internal in their head and they're critiquing, you know, should I talk to this person? Should I not talk to this person? How should I talk to this person? Because they're live and they're right in front of you. It's so hard to say whether it's detrimental or not. We always come into new technology, I think, before we fully thought out the, the repercussions of it. It's the, you know, we, we came into automobiles before we thought out the repercussions of environmental, you know, the environmental damage that they would cause. We came in, and it's like that with everything. They really, really, really are much more harder on themselves than ever. Um, you know, people post their grades or they're, you know, looking at schools or they're, you know, whatever it is that they're doing that they constantly have something to compare it to rather than just be yourself. And um, all of that comparison over time really, um, when you're not doing it or you don't think you're doing it as well as the next one, it, it takes its toll over time. So who knows what will happen to these kids that are kind of growing up in a digital age because these kids aren't grown up yet. We don't know how how they'll feel about you know adult romantic relationships, how they'll feel about their children, how they'll feel about their relationship with their parents as they turn into adults and um, you know will they feel connected emotionally and um, and physically with other people um, will they not need it? When you have those human connections um, you know, there's a vibe in the room. There's a feeling that somebody feels. Um, you know, you and I met for the first time and like it's a nice thing to have that, you know, I see your whole presence and feel your presence and you feel my presence and, and that is something that cannot really be replaced. Lately I realized that through some friends that maybe passed away that life is short and I just do not want to have any regrets when I'm older. I'm, Going through college, I'm clearly going through 
I wouldn't say one of the best years of my life, but I'm going through one of the most important years of my life when it comes to like making relationships and just building new friendships. So I guess I just want to focus on that instead of just being with the phone because I have my entire life to just sit in a room and be with the phone by myself. I don't think everything needs to be documented through our phones for us to have an enjoyable life. We're living our lives to broadcast to other people instead of living it for ourselves. There is more um, that you can go and have a meal and connect with people and um, you know go out and do some fun activity and come back with great memories and not have a single picture to show for it. Everywhere provides you with the ability to stay connected and having the opportunity not to be is kind of, I think, the route that we should be going and 2020. If I were doing this with you over, you know, over a screen, that screen automatically disconnects me um, from that internal feeling of being present and being moved by someone else's situation and vice versa. Um, what I'm doing, you know, would al also have an effect on, you know, if I'm reaching for your hand or if I just, you know, lean in closer. Um, the warmth of my person would be there and that person would feel that and that's not something that you would get if just over the phone. I mean you do but you don't. Um, not the same. It's just not the same. Life has gotten better since I have stopped using social media but also you know it, it, it's not just that it's also like filling my life with good things. Who it was that I connected with and which activities I liked that gave me that sense of satisfaction, like I've done something that I'm happy with and I don't need to show anybody because I feel satisfied with what I've done. And once I figured that out, my life did get better because you know I finished a day and I felt complete even though nobody knew about it. Like I didn't feel like I needed to tell anyone that like, hey, this is what I did and you know, look at my picture of how much fun I was having because I already had the fun and there wasn't any fun left to be had by posting a picture, you know? Like I didn't feel like that would add to the experience at all. What we need to know, we do know. You know, we don't always need to get it from, you know, the social media. I think that um, the big things that happen in life, um, what's happening in our families, you know, we hear about that because we're person to person with them. And um, I think that the social media has certainly um, limited our interactions in person, face to face, because you can just see them, you know, they're like, oh, uh, yeah. And rather than actually going to go visit them or actually calling them on the phone, um, it's just very different. I don't know how people continue to do it all the time, you know, it, it, continue to try to amplify their experiences beyond what they are using Instagram and using Facebook and Twitter. I, you know, there, there's like real life to be had and it, it is enough if you just do it, um, if you just participate in it. Um, for, hold on, ask me that question again. So accurate, <laughs> eloquent. And, um... No. Oh no! I'm sorry. No. Wait, am I 37 or 38? I don't remember. Yeah, but what are those called? They're Bad social voice. media. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already losing my memory. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> my phone's not even on my person right now. Luna. <laughs> Luna, do you have to eat right now? Luna. 
we don't have the same circle of friends, the same line of work, nothing in common. So, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean. It wouldn't be the first time that you've used me for bloopers. We love each other and we have a lot of things in common. I'm just hitting my stride now. I almost picked it up to take a photo of you two because it was so cute. And I was like, oh, this completely defeats the purpose of what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was texting, but then I saw this $20 off your first order of Uber Eats, which is really good.